In this video, we're going to cover an ONPG test, and this is activity 5-5. And so we're going to start out talking about the setup for this test. So this experiment would be done in pairs, and you would use a loop to inoculate a heavy inoculation. And what that means is that for this test, the way that this experiment is going to work is that you would have two test tubes. One of them has Citrobacter frundii, so CF, and the other one would have Salmonella enteritidis. And so in this test, what you do is you take a water demo and you measure out one milliliter of sterile deionized water. And so we put it in the tube and then we add an ONPG tablet into the test tube. Now, if this is water, what that tells you is that this is a rapid test. The readout for this can be done in as little as two hours. So if you're doing a rapid test where you're inoculating water and it's not going to grow much, you need to have a lot of bacteria in this test. And so this would be an example of when we would use a lot of bacteria. That's our heavy inoculum, meaning you wanna have so much on the loop that you can actually visually see it. You wanna pick up a lot of bacteria. Because again, if you're inoculating water, it's not gonna grow. You need to make sure that you have enough bacteria in there so that the readout will happen. And so both of these bacteria would be on a plate. And so you would use your loop and you would pick up your bacteria and you would add it to the water. Then you would put the cap on the tube and you would incubate at about 35, so between 35 and 37 degrees Celsius, for two hours. You can allow this test to go longer, but typically as little as two hours, you can get the readout. And so I'm gonna show you a video that basically is going to summarize how to do this. So in this experiment, I'm going to do my ONPG test. This is going to be a rapid test, meaning the readout can be done in as little as two hours. So we have these empty tubes here. And what I need to do is I need to take uh, this tube and I need to add one milliliter of sterile water to this tube. So to measure out one milliliter, we use what's called a water demo. And so you just hold them side by side. And while holding them side by side, you add water to approximately the same level. Okay, so that looks pretty good. They're about the same level. So now I have my one milliliter water. Then I'm going to take an ONPG tablet. So these are a lactose analog. They are structurally closely related to lactose. And so to get a tablet, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shake it into my hand and I have my ONPG tablet. So I need to take that tablet and I'm going to add it to the water. Now notice I put the tablet in my hand and you might think, well, isn't that a problem because your hand is not sterile? The answer is that this is a rapid test. So this readout could be done in two hours and so we wouldn't have to worry about that as much. So I have my ONPG tablet in my water. I'm just gonna kind of vortex, just kind of mix it, get it to dissolve. Now I'm gonna add my bacteria to my tube. There are two bacteria that I would use for this experiment. I would use Citrobacter frundii and Salmonella enteritidis. Now, normally when doing this experiment, I would take bacteria from a plate. I don't have a plate available to me, so instead I'm going to use a slant. But the idea here is you need a large mass of bacteria. You need a lot. It's not like many of the other experiments where I tell you you don't wanna see anything on your loop. In this experiment, you want to see a big glob of bacteria on your loop because this is a rapid test. Notice you're inoculating water. And so what that means is that the bacteria is not gonna really grow. So you have to inoculate a large amount to get this experiment to work. So I'm gonna take my loop and I'm gonna flame sterilize. And I'm going to let it cool. I'm going to open my tube. 
And again, normally this would be on a plate. So I'm letting it cool. And then I'm gonna take the cap between my pinky and my ring finger. And I'm gonna flame it. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up a big glob of bacteria. Flame it. So hopefully you can see that, but there is a mass of bacteria on my loop. You would want even more than this if you could. I'm coming from a slant, so it's harder to pick up as much, but you do wanna be able to see a visible amount on your loop. And then you're just gonna take that, you can just flame sterilize, and just stir it in with the ONPG tablet. And then flame this from the base to the tip and then set it down. I can flame this and then put the cap on. And so I would make two of these, one for each organism and then I would take these and put them in the incubator. I could do the readout in as little as two hours or I could allow it to go longer. Either way would work and then I would look at for a color change after that. So now let's talk about the readout for our ONPG test. And so again, this could be done in as little as two hours, or we could do it at the next class period. So let's talk about our readout. So for the ONPG test, the purpose is to determine whether bacteria express or produce beta-galactosidase. Beta-galactosidase is an enzyme that bacteria produce that allows them to metabolize lactose. And so essentially what we're doing in this test is we're determining if bacteria can metabolize lactose. Now, you may recall that we've already looked at an experiment that we could do to determine if bacteria could metabolize lactose. What was our other experiment that allowed us to determine if bacteria ferment or metabolize a specific carbohydrate? And so the answer is the fennel red test. In a minute, we will talk about what advantage an ONPG test has over a fennel red test. So we will talk about that in a minute. But first, let's go through and discuss how an ONPG test works. So again, we want to know, do bacteria metabolize lactose? Do they produce an enzyme called beta-galactosidase? And so in this experiment, our substrate is called ONPG. ONPG stands for O-nitrophenyl beta-D-galactopyranose. Basically, it is a lactose analog, meaning that structurally it's very similar to lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide. It's a disaccharide, di means two sugars, that is glucose with galactose. So normally you would have two sugars linked together, glucose and galactose. Now, when we look at lactose, one of the things is that if we have sugars, sugars are going to be polar. And if they are polar, sugars cannot cross the cell membrane on their own. They need the help of a transport protein to get in. However, if we use ONPG, ONPG again, is a lactose analog. It resembles lactose, but it's not lactose. Instead of the second ring being a sugar, notice that this second ring is primarily hydrocarbons. Remember that carbon and hydrogen, similar electronegativities. So when you see that ring structure and you see that it's mostly carbon and hydrogen, you should think, well, that then makes this molecule to be nonpolar. So the advantage of using ONPG is that ONPG can cross the membrane on its own. It can get into the cell on its own without the help of a transport protein. And so this ONPG gives us an advantage in that it tests for beta-galactosidase specifically, the enzyme that metabolizes lactose directly. So ONPG is a tablet and it is white. So that tablet that I put into the tube is a white tablet. 
So our substrate, again, is our ONPG, which is our lactose analog. Because ONPG looks like lactose, beta-galactosidase will also hydrolyze ONPG, meaning it will also break apart the rings in ONPG. Beta-galactosidase is an endoenzyme. It's within the bacterial cell, so this is going to happen inside the cell. And our products are going to be beta-galactose, that's one of the sugars, and the other product is what's called O-nitrophenol. And this O-nitrophenol gives a color. Oftentimes, if you looked at the stains that we talked about, a lot of times there's this phenyl ring. Basically, it's this carbon ring that has alternating double bonds. And this ring often is associated with colors. So when we break down ONPG into the two products, that is going to release this O-nitrophenol, and this O-nitrophenol is going to be yellow. So your readout for this is simply looking at the color. If it is yellow, it's positive. So notice that if I look at my ONPG test that's done two hours after incubation, if it is yellow, that tells me that in that tube, we have O-nitrophenol, which means that the bacteria was able to hydrolyze or break down the ONPG, which tells us that they have beta-galactosidase and that they would also metabolize lactose. If, however, the tube stayed white or colorless, meaning there's no color change, that would be our negative in this test. So a negative is gonna be just white or colorless. Positive is gonna be yellow because of the O-nitrophenol. Now, in this test, on your biochemical sheet, there is no media. Remember, we're inoculating water and we're just adding a tablet that contains the substrate. So the tablet has the ONPG, so there is no real media. There's no pH indicator, right, because there's nothing changing colors depending on the pH. And there's also not a reagent. It's not something we add after. The tablet is what we put in at the beginning, and the tablet is our substrate. And when that substrate gets broken down, the product is going to give us our readout. So when you're filling out your um, beta biochemical sheets, no media, no pH indicator, no reagents. We do have a substrate, we do have an enzyme, we have a product, and then we talked about what a positive test looks like and what a negative test looks like. And so this test will allow us to determine if bacteria can metabolize lactose. And if they can, they would produce that beta-galactosidase. That's an enzyme specifically that bacteria would have to break down lactose. So now let's talk about why would we use an ONPG test versus a phenyl red test, right? Both could be used to do this, but a ONPG test is more specific. So let's look at this. So why is ONPG useful? Reason number one, it's faster. So we can get this result in as little as two hours. Whereas for our phenyl red test, it could take between 24 to 48 hours. Now, the reason that it takes longer for the phenyl red test is that lactose, remember I said, is polar. It is unable to cross the cell membrane on its own. So in order to get lactose into the cell, it needs an enzyme or a protein embedded in the membrane. And this protein is called lactose permease. Lactose permease is a channel protein that allows lactose to get into the cell. Now, one of the things that we'll learn about in our genetics chapter is that in order for bacteria to metabolize lactose, they need to turn on expression. They need to produce these proteins to metabolize lactose. One of those is the permease. They need to produce that permease um, channel protein. They also need to produce beta-galactosidase. Now, for bacteria, if they are given the choice between a monosaccharide like glucose, 
or a disaccharide like lactose, bacteria will preferentially use glucose if they can use it. The monosaccharide is going to be easier to digest. So in the case of lactose metabolism, that is what we call regulated gene expression. It's an adaptive gene. We only turn on expression of those genes, meaning we only make or the bacteria only makes those proteins if lactose is present and glucose is not. Because again, if glucose is present, that's what they're going to use. And so they're not going to take the time and effort to make enzymes to break down lactose if they can simply just use the glucose. This gene system is used to conserve energy. We don't want to make enzymes that the cell doesn't need. So by default, lactose digestion is not on in the cell. It's not something that's always present. If lactose is present and glucose is not, then bacteria will turn on gene expression. They will start to make this permease protein and typically that takes about 24 hours for bacteria to make that permease protein, meaning that that's why for a fennel red test, you have to do your readout between 24 to 48 hours because it's gonna take time to make this transport protein to allow lactose to get in. And it also takes time to make the beta-galactosidase, the enzyme that's going to hydrolyze lactose, because again, it's turned off by default, but if lactose is present and glucose is not, then the cell is gonna make that beta-galactosidase. So ONPG is faster because, again, ONPG gets in by diffusion. Because of that nonpolar part of the molecule, it's able to get into the cell on its own. So this is why this readout can be done in two hours because the ONPG gets in, we don't have to wait for the bacteria to make the permease to get the lactose in. So one reason ONPG is useful is that it's faster. Reason number two is that it's more accurate because it is permease independent. So what that means is that, let's say for example, bacteria acquire a mutation, and this happens all the time. And let's say just by chance, bacteria gets a mutation in their permease gene. They get a change to their DNA sequence for that permease gene. And that mutation causes this protein to change shape so that now lactose does not get into the cell. And so if this permease gene mutates and the protein changes, if lactose can't get in, obviously, the bacteria is not going to be able to metabolize lactose and you would get a false negative because if lactose can't get in, you're not going to get metabolism of lactose. However, it's not necessarily true, right, if we do our fennel red test, if we were to get a negative, right, it, again, it could be because the permease is mutated and lactose simply can't get in. Bacteria may still have the beta-galactosidase. It just, the lactose can't get in, and that's why you're getting a negative. Whereas for ONPG, because it gets into the cell on its own, we take away that. We say that it's permease independent. It's not dependent on this other protein to get it into the cell. It's able to get in on its own. So it's more accurate because it's testing for the presence of beta-galactosidase specifically because we don't have to worry about getting the lactose in. So reason number two is that it's more accurate because it's permease independent. It's not dependent on this protein that allows lactose to get in. ONPG gets in all on its own and so now we can more directly test if bacteria produce the beta-galactosidase, the enzyme that allows it to metabolize the lactose. So this is something you wanna add to your biochemical sheet. You wanna put on there, under additional notes, the reasons why we would use ONPG.
there's a particular need. We could do a fennel red test, but an ONPG is more direct and it's usually more accurate because it's not dependent on that permease. So let's look at our results for the organisms that we tested. So we had two organisms. We have Citrobacter frundii and we have Salmonella enteritidis. So notice that if I look at these tubes, Citrobacter frundii is going to be yellow. What does that tell you about Citrobacter frundii? Is it positive or negative in the ONPG test? And the answer is it's positive because it's yellow, which tells us that the O nitrophenyl is produced. And when that O nitrophenyl is produced, it turns yellow. So yellow is positive. So Citrobacter frundii is positive. But Salmonella enteritidis is not yellow, it's white. So that would be negative. That means that no O nitrophenyl was produced. There was no O nitrophenyl, which means that for salmonella, they don't produce beta-galactosidase because if they did, they would produce that O-nitrophenyl. But we don't see that, so salmonella is going to be our negative in this test. And so this concludes our ONPG.